In previous videos, I've discussed with you about electric field strengths and electric potentials. But what is the relationship between these notions? What links them together? You want to find out? Follow me. Let's place in empty space a positive charge BQ. That charge generates an electric field around it. Now, let's consider a space axis with the origin at the same position as charge BQ and with a positive direction for that axis towards the right. At a very large distance from charge BQ, let's position a positive test charge little q. The distance between the two charges is so large that I can consider little q as being outside of the field generated by big Q. The electric force applied on little q can therefore be considered equal to zero. So, without any forces applied on it, the test charge doesn't have the capacity to do any work. In other words, it carries no energy. Now, I would like to move the test charge little q to a point A. A point A that is located at a distance r from big Q therefore inside the electric field. To begin, I accelerate little q just a little so that it can gain some speed. And then I make sure that the speed stays constant during the whole trip. Only just before it arrives, I decelerate little q so that when it reaches point A, its velocity is zero. I do this to make sure that between the starting position and the ending position, charge little q does not gain any kinetic energy. When little q comes closer to charge big q, it enters the field and therefore experiences a repulsive force to the right, the Coulomb force. To keep the velocity constant, I must apply a force of the same magnitude in the opposite direction, to the left. That's a direct consequence of the first law of Newton. For example, when charge little q is at a distance x from charge big q, the applied force should have a magnitude equal to k big q little q over x squared and should be directed towards the left. By applying a force across a distance, I am doing work on the test charge. That means that I am giving energy to that charge. Therefore, the potential energy the charge gets when it arrives at point A is equal to the work I did to put it there. To calculate that work, I could maybe use the formula you all know, that is, work is equal to force multiplied by displacement. But here, the applied force depends on the position x, so I cannot use that formula. Instead, I should divide the travel of charge rate q into infinitely small displacements dx. Because a displacement dx is infinitely small, I can consider the applied force across it as being constant. This allows me to calculate dw, the work carried out on the charge by the applied force during the displacement dx. Then, I just sum all the dw's for the whole displacement from infinity to point A. That should result in the work provided by the applied force between infinity and point A. It's an integral. To develop this integral, let's consider magnitudes. I chose the axis positive to the right. And because the applied force is directed to the left, a negative sign pops up. Some of you might argue that the test charge is moving towards the left, so I should consider dx as being negative. But be careful. Here, the direction of the motion is expressed in how the limits of the integral are ordered. k, big Q and little q are constants. I can remove them from the integral. The antiderivative is Let's apply the limits and we end up with this formula. The work I did to bring charge little q from infinity to point A, that is at a distance r from charge big Q, is proportional to the product of the charges and inversely proportional to that distance r. That work is equal to the potential energy of charge little q when it is located at point A. So now we have an expression for that potential energy. To make all this a little bit more concrete, let's play with numbers. Imagine that the test charge would be 3 coulomb, and that I need 12 joules to bring it to point A. 
That means that the potential energy of the test charge at point A would be 12 joules. What if instead I move the charge of 5 coulombs from infinity to point A? What would be the potential energy of that charge at point A? When I ask this question to my students, most of them answer correctly. Well, 20 joules, of course. When I ask how they came to this result, they respond by saying, look, 12 joules were needed to bring 3 coulombs at point A. So each coulomb need 4 joules to be put at point A. And 4 multiplied by 5 is 20, so 20 joules. That is when I make them realize that within their reasoning, they have been using the concept of electric potential. The electric potential at a position in an electric field is the work required to bring one unit of charge from infinity to that position. Consequently, the electric potential is also the potential energy that one coulomb of charge carries when it is placed at that position. In our case, for point A, it is 4 joules per coulomb, or 4 volts. V equals PE over little q. Substituting the potential energy by its formula, the little q's cancel, and we end up with V equals K big Q over R. Here we go. We have now a formula describing the electric potential anywhere in a field created by a punctual charge. The electric potential at a position within such a field is proportional to the charge creating the field and inversely proportional to the distance from that charge. One of the things I love to do is to relax surrounded by nature, within the calm of nature. It's a hobby of mine, and I made this hobby a gift for you. I set up a new playlist on the Physics Medity channel, relaxing ambience for study, rest and meditation. You can find there two hour long videos that will help you to focus during your study sessions. You can also use the videos to relax, meditate, or just enjoy a good nap. To preserve the experience, there are no commercial interruptions. So, go on the channel page, find the playlist named Relaxing Ambience for Study, Rest and Meditation, and enjoy a focused study to the fullest. Now, back to electric fields and electric potentials. Now that we have an expression for the electric potential at any distance from a punctual charge big Q, we can graph it. This electrical potential function is of the form 1 over x. So, as you can see, the gradient is negative and decreases with the distance. To calculate the gradient of a graph, it is sufficient to compute the derivative of the function represented by that graph. So let's do that for the electric potential function. kq over x squared. Hmm, this feels quite familiar to me. I've seen this before somewhere, haven't you? Yes, kq over x squared is a formula for the electric field strength at a distance x from a charge big Q that's creating the field. So we can now write dv over dx equals minus e. The gradient of the electric potential function is minus the electric field strength. The magnitude of the slope of the potential function is equal to the magnitude of the electric field strength. The steepness of the graph represents the strength of the field. You can make an analogy. A charge in an electric field rolls down the potential function like a ball rolls down a hill. The steeper the hill, the larger the acceleration of the ball. If we want, we can also write this in its integral form. In that form, because we need to consider the integration constant, the subject is a voltage, not an electric potential. 
remember that a voltage is a difference of electric potentials between two positions. If the electric field strength is uniform, that means that it is constant at all positions, like for example between two parallel plates which are charged, the field strengths can be removed from the integral, and you get... OK, let's get concrete again by playing with numbers. Imagine connecting two plates distanced 10 mm from each other to a battery delivering 20 volts. Therefore, 20 divided by 0.01, that is 2000 volts per meter. For each displacement of 1 mm between the plates, there is a potential drop of 2 volts. From that, you can generate a scale of the electric potential across the plates. An electric field strength E is the force experienced by a positive charge per unit charge. From that definition, you know that E is expressed in newtons per coulomb. Now, from this video, you also know that E can be expressed in volts per meter. So, volts per meter should be equivalent to newtons per coulomb, right? As an exercise, Convince yourself about that. You can do this by performing a dimensional analysis. It's a question I've seen pop up a few times at exams. Voila, that's it for today. I think there is everything we need on the channel now so that we can dive deeper into our electromagnetic explorations. The next step will be Faraday and Lenz laws. You enjoyed this video or found it useful? Well, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and smash this notification bell. And of course, you can leave a comment or ask a question. I will attempt to answer it, but any other member of the community can jump in too and give his own perspective and try to help you. Yes, we are nearly 60,000. It's quite amazing when you think about it. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, and I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.